Good morning, Lisa Tierney here from God's Watchman Wall to the Nations. This is Love's Living Word Ministries. Have you checked out the new Watchman warnings? They are for you to be praying about. We are grateful that you would pray through for the Father because he uses us to pray as his vessels for the kingdom so that we can see things change, including people transitioning from this earth into being with the Father. That is one of the main things uh, connected to the watchman. Um, and you can find a beautiful scripture there in one um, Psalms 127. And it speaks of uh, the watchman and it speaks of our children as an inheritance. Now, let's continue with today. But we're going a little bit off topic, uh, but it's still in line with the Lord. This is what he wants to do where he wants to go for yesterday we were looking at transparency with the image of the rose with i saw a, a picture looking down at a rose and in it there was veins and then i saw a ring by it and transparency when you're transparent it brings you the clarity that you need you see without transparency things become very muddled you are uh, become very uh sluggish you don't there's confusion that can set in because it's not based in the truth Without the truth, nothing can stand right. And our eyes and our ears and our heart motive must be in line with the truth. You know we've been looking at truth in the Greek. We've been looking at all of those things. But today, let's have a look at the book of Jude. The Lord just took me to the book of Jude. This is one real tough one. Now, I'm going to save us today from going through the really, really tough bit. Because I think we've gone through a lot of that lately. And the reason why uh, uh, I'm going here is the Lord wants me to just briefly mention what a religious spirit is. Well, they, in the Hebrew Bible, are Jebusites. They are ones that are called threshers. They will put all sorts on you to try and keep you bound. Uh, they will fight you. They will uh, try to uh, keep you tied to things that are not of the kingdom. They are anti-grace. They don't like charis. They don't like grace. They don't like unmerited favor. In fact, it's a case of you have to earn your way. You'll be constantly uh, condemned. And it goes on and on and on. This is what a religious spirit will try to keep you bound to. Their main aim is to shut down the spirit of God. That is the main aim of our uh, uh, a religious spirit and it will argue with you it will uh try to uh de defame de uh whatever neutralize everything connected to grace and you must not allow that amen so basically if you read um um above in jude you'll see a little bit about that but uh now we're going to verse 17 let's have a look a call to persevere but dear friends remember we're in jude Remember that what the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ foretold. They said to you, in the last days there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are the people who divide you, who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the spirit. Did you just hear that? So we know that we've been looking at Galatians chapter 5. And in that, we've seen the gifts of the fruit of the spirit against, which is verse 22, against the lust of the flesh, the, the flesh in action. It is contrary to the spirit. But for time, we're not going to go there. Have a look at the other videos. That's Galatians chapter five. The verse that is great connected to that is the first verse. Stand fast ye therefore in the liberty where Christ has made you free. Do not go back and entangle yourself or allow anyone to entangle you again to slavery and bondage. And the religious spirit is very good. And that's its main aim of trying to get you back enslaved in bondage. Get you back chained up so that you feel that you are no longer free. And actually, I'm here to tell you today that Jesus paid in full once and for you. You are free for who the Son set free is free indeed we're going to uh uh verse 20 that you jude chapter one dear friends by building yourselves up in the most holy faith 
and praying in the spirit. Keep yourselves in God's love. Did you hear that? So there is a connection between the most holy faith and praying in the spirit. And it keeps you in God's love as you wait for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. So you see, God is merciful. He's not a one that would try to bring taskmasters uh, down on your head, condemn you, tell you that you're not free, that this, that, that. No, no, no. He is merciful. And then he's asking you in verse 22 to be merciful to those who doubt. Did you hear that? So there's going to be many who doubt. There's going to be so many people who don't believe. Don't believe fully. They're not fully anchored in the truth. They're wishy-washy, but you've got to be merciful to them. Save others by snatching them from the fire. Did you hear that? To those others show mercy mixed with fear, hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. I want us to take a look at Romans and we're in chapter 3. I'm going to go down a little bit further because I want to speak about Jesus Christ. Uh, just last night we had an image, two of them. Uh, one was a bruised reed uh, and another one was the tender shoot and that is Jesus. That is who he is. He uh, was brought up in really, really fallow ground, very dry ground, a tender shoot. You'll find this in Isaiah 53. And he was acquainted with sorrow. He was acquainted with all of these things. He paid in full for you and for me so that you don't have to go through that. Okay, verse uh, Romans chapter 3. Therefore the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For the law is the knowledge of sin. Did you just hear that? So if you're very conscious of sin, if you're very conscious of people's sins, if you're very conscious of sin, 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 it's the law. But you see, we have a greater one. We have grace, unmerited favor, unmerited favor. And that is Jesus Christ. He is grace and he is our propitiation. So verse 22, Romans 3, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith in Jesus Christ, is unto you. Oh, let's just go back. Okay. Sorry, verse 21. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Verse 22. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith. Hear that? It's by faith in Jesus Christ and to all and upon all of them that believe. For there is no difference. Hear this. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But it doesn't stop there. It says, but being justified freely by his grace. Wow. Through the redemption that is Christ Jesus. Verse 25. Whom God has set to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. To declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past. Did you hear that? Through the forbearance of God. I'm going to go back. Because this just smashes this religious spirit. In two. Amen. Verse 25. Verse 24. Being justified freely. By grace. Through the redemption. That is Christ Jesus. Did you just hear that? <laughs> Whom God has set forth to be. The propitiation through faith. In his blood. To declare his righteousness. For the remission of of sins that are past. So the Lord is asking you to stop looking back at your past. Stop looking back at all those things. Because if you have asked for forgiveness or if you've received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, they've been remitted for. He is the propitiation by his by faith in his blood to declare his righteousness over you for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God to declare, and I say at this time, in his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him 
who believe in Jesus Christ. Did you hear that Jesus Christ, by grace, has remitted your sins of the past? The religious spirit, the Jebusite, will try to keep you bound. Will try to keep you chained and condemned in all of those things connected to any past. But Jesus is the propitiation. What is the propitiation? What does it mean? It means the act of gaining and regaining the favour of goodwill. Amen. It means appeasing as a sacrifice, an act of propitiation. And that is what Jesus did. That is an example of what Jesus did when he went on the cross. He became a sacrifice for you and for me and for mankind. We know that, John chapter 3, for God so loved the world. But, 316, but you see the religious spirit will try to argue and get you out of and looking back and looking onto sin. Because it is bound by the law. But grace is here. And we've just read it. Verse 24, Romans 3, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is Christ Jesus. What is redemption? Well, redemption means being legally bought back. You were legally bought back from the dominion of darkness. You have been translated into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom you have redemption, the forgiveness of sins, the remittance of sins. Christ is our propitiation, the act of gaining and regaining favour or goodwill. It is appeasement of sacrifice that is what christ did on your behalf but where we're going as well is this so how do we stay in that momentum how well but you dear friends you stay there okay let's go back to jude verse 17 again dear friends remember that the apostles of our lord jesus christ were told verse 18 that they said to you in the last times there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. And these are people who divide you, who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the spirit. You see, the religious spirit does not uh, have the spirit of God. And we've looked at Galatians chapter uh, 5. That speaks of the spirit and it speaks of the enmity between the spirit and the flesh. All right, let's go back to Jude chapter one. We're going to continue. But dear friends, verse 20, by building yourselves up in the most holy faith. Wow. And praying in the spirit. Verse 21. Keep yourselves in God's love. Show the most holy faith. And praying in the Holy Spirit, you build yourself up, yourselves, in God's love as you wait. So you'll have to tarry for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ to bring you into eternal life. He is a merciful God. He's already paid it for you once and for all. So you are set free in Jesus' name. If you're free, set free. For who the Son set free, is free did say it. I am free. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, Verse 22, but, oh, sorry, verse 22, be merciful to those who doubt. So you're going to come across them, saving others by snatching them out from the fire. And to others show mercy, mixed with fear, hating, even the clothing stained with corruption. And to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault. And with great joy to the only God, our Saviour, be glory, majesty, power, authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Did you just hear what Father said? So in Jude chapter 1, verse 20, it speaks of building ourselves up. The Greek word for that is epokodomio, a present middle participle to build on a foundation this is where we're going today 
Why? Because the last few weeks, the Lord has been speaking to me very clearly about the cornerstone. He's been showing me much about the cornerstone and the builder and the master builder. And Jesus is the builder of the house. We know in Psalms 127 that it says, and I'm going to go and get it up. I wasn't planning to, but we're going to do it now. Psalms 127. Just so I get it right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Unless the Lord builds the house, it's labors. It's builders labor in vain. And unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen stand guard in vain. In vain do you rise and stay up late, toiling for food to eat. But he grants sleep to those he loves. And our children are the heritage of the Lord. Children are our reward. And it goes on. But for time's sake, the builder. Did you just hear that? The builder. This is so important. So the Greek word, which I'm trying to find again, is for edification, building up. It is an edification, an act of one who promotes another's growth in Christian wisdom. It is piety. That is what edification is. But you can build yourself up in the most holy faith. As you wait, you can be building and edifying your own Christian walk as you stand and as you wait and tarry for God's mercy for eternity. By what? By praying in the Holy Spirit, building yourself up in a most holy faith. Because Jesus Christ is the propitiation for our sins. He's gained for you favor and goodwill. He is paid in full once and for all by the grace you are justified amen through his redemption by christ jesus he whom god has set forth to be the propitiation through faith in his blood note that there is a blood covenant so he's a cornerstone we have a blood covenant we are to build ourselves up in the most holy faith amen likewise romans 8 26 the spirit helps us in our weaknesses for we do not know what we pray or as we ought, but the Spirit himself will intercede for us with groanings of words too deep to utter. Ephesians 6, 18, praying at all times in spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert. This is where we're going as well. Christ is our cornerstone. We're keeping alert. Transparency, I said it yesterday by the power of the Lord. Transparency brings clarity. Where people are not transparent, where you're not being transparent, you will bring a confusion. There will be an untruth uh, aligned to it. You must not allow that. We must stay in the clarity of the Lord because that is where you will hear the mysteries and the secrets of the kingdom. So you pray at all times in the spirit with all prayer, all supplication. Keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. So that mirrors Jude chapter one, where you are to be merciful to those who doubt, to those who are still not in the kingdom yet. You saving them from the and snatching them from the fire in the name of Jesus when you're praying for them. Jesus will go and snatch them out of the fire. You see, he's a God who loves. That's why he came here. He is the propitiation for our sins. We are to edify ourselves. We are to build ourselves up in the most holy faith. And the Greek word for edify means um, an okodomio, and it literally means to build a house. So how are we building our house and God's house? How are we allowing the house to be built? You see, Christ is our cornerstone, and I've got to get it up. I thought I had it there, but it's not, and we've got many scriptures on that. He's our cornerstone. And he is the stone that the builders rejected. Okay, 1 Peter 2, 7. To you who believe, he is precious, but to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected <laughs> has become the chief cornerstone. Jesus Christ is the cornerstone of every building in the house of God. And if it isn't, it will not stand for eternity romans 9 31 behold i lay in zion a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense 
but he who believes in him will not be disappointed. I'm not going to go into detail on what Romans 9 means. You can get the picture. Yes, you'll be an offense to many because Jesus Christ and the Spirit of God live in you. Amen. But he is holding all things together. For in him, all things hold together. Colossians chapter 1. And we're going to go there, actually. 1 Peter, uh, we've just spoken that. A stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. Praise God. You see, Jesus Christ is the cornerstone. And coming to him as a living stone, which has been rejected by men. Men will reject Christ. Reject God's own. The religious spirit rejects God's own. Witchcraft will reject God's own because it doesn't like grace. But is choice and precious in the sight of God. You also as living stones. Did you hear that? Are being built up in a spiritual house for a holy priesthood. 1 Peter 2, 4, 8. To offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For the contained in scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a choice stone. A precious stone, cornerstone, and he who believes will not be disappointed. Jesus Christ is the propitiation for your sins and for mine. He is your cornerstone. He has given us the opportunity to be able to build ourselves up and to tarry and to wait in the most holy place. And um, we do not have to be subject to the religious spirit who will reject grace, who will reject the spirit of God who will reject the things of the kingdom because they are in the flesh and we've just read in chapter uh, in Jude and I'm going to go back there dear friends remember what the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ said they said in the last days there will be scoffers and that is exactly what a religious spirit does it is a mocker it is a scoffer it will come across uh, and mock the things of the kingdom because it hate the spirit it is enmity to the spirit because it can't fathom it you see it's still under the law instead of the truth which is grace oh god we thank you for your grace being justified freely by your grace through the redemption that is christ you god have set forth to be the propitiation through faith by your blood we now are free we no longer look back to the past we looked at it before our sins are forgiven from uh, the past and that is it it says it it is a done deal don't ever look there again amen jesus christ is the one that will keep you from stumbling and present you glorious to his father do you know that you are washed and that you are loved and that he holds all things together when you feel like you can't hold it all together you're not meant to anyway. I'm just going to get it up. Amen. He holds all things together. Colossians 1. He is before all things. And in him holds all things together. I'd like to get the full uh, thing of Colossians 1 actually. Because it's so good. And we're going to finish there. King James Version. Thank you Lord. Thank you Father. Thank you, Lord. Since we've heard, verse 4, of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which you have for all the saints, for the hope which was laid up for you in heaven, wherefore you've heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which is come unto you. Did you hear that? It's the truth. As it is in all the world, bring forth fruit. The truth brings fruit, beloved. Clarity and transparency and truth. And congruence will bring you fruit as it doth also in you since the day you've heard and you know the grace of God in truth. Amen. We're going to go down. Verse 8. Who has declared unto us the love in the spirit? For this cause, we also, since the day we have heard, and this is my prayer for you today, you do not cease into praying to desire to be filled with all knowledge in his will, in all wisdom. And spiritual understanding. Do you see as you are praying in the, in the spirit. You're being filled with all wisdom. 
and all understanding. You are you are being built and edified, just as the Greek word speaks of. You are being built and edified. Edification is apokodonia. How about that? Praise God. That ye may walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, being fruitful in every good work. This is my prayer. And increasing in the knowledge of God being strengthened with all might according to his glorious power with all patience and long suffering with joyfulness <laughs> giving thanks to the father who has made us to meet to be partakers of the inheritance in the light hear this this is colossians chapter 1 verse 13 who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins don't ever let ever again a religious jebusite try to keep you bound because you are free you are free jesus said so he is the image of the invisible god the firstborn of every creature for by him were all things created did you just hear that that are in heaven and that are on the earth visible and invisible yes there are spirits that are invisible many angels are here even now as i speak and by you whether they be thrones dominions principalities in all past but the most important one is the holy spirit who is living in you and all things were created by him but he is before all things and he and by him all things consist he holds all things together and he is the head of the body the church who is the beginning and the firstborn of the dead did you just hear that the church is the beginning and the firstborn of the dead that in all things we and he might have preeminence he for it pleased the father that in him should the fullness dwell and having being made peace having made peace through the blood are you going to receive his peace today by him to reconcile all things to him by him i say whether they be things on the earth or things in heaven you that was sometime alienated and enemies in your minds by wicked works have now been reconciled through the propitiation of sins in the body of the flesh through death to present you holy unblameable and unreprovable in his sight and if we continue in the faith grounded settled and not be moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have heard and father this i pray today in the name of jesus for every eye every ear father that is open to receiving what it is that i speak in jesus name that is open to the spirit of god father that is a heart that will receive the spirit of god and those who don't father those who doubt those who are not in line with the spirit i have mercy on in jesus name we have mercy on in the name of jesus this i pray today in jesus name remember he is your cornerstone he is the alpha the omega the beginning and the end he is everything that he holds all things together okay build yourself up in the most holy faith as you tarry as you wait and watch what God will do, because he is the propitiation for your sins. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.